Hello everybody and welcome to Dan Tyrant's Tech and I hope you're doing well. And in today's news we're going to be discussing Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 CPUs. We've got clarification behind the naming scheme of the AMD GPUs and also we take a little look at Intel 10 nanometer process. So let's roll that intro and jump straight on into it. So we're going to start things off with Ryzen, and in the latest benchmark releases from Geekbench, we can see an i9-9900K up against a Ryzen 7 3800X. So the single core score of the Intel chip beats AMD's chip by 783 points, but not by much in the multi-core score. Memory-wise, the 9900K was running at 2666MHz, which is a minimum for the CPU, whilst the 3800X was running at 2100MHz. However, we do get a bit of a different story when both chips are running at 2100MHz. Single core score near enough levels out between the two, but in the multi-core score, the 3800X beats the 9900K by 8748 points. We also know that the Verizon 3000 series will support up to 3200 MHz of RAM, but let's wait for independent reviews before we go ahead and give AMD the CPU crown. We however get an insight into the overclock inside of Zen 2 from Travis Kirch, and this is what he had to say. I think the top of the stack you're going to be fairly limited initially. You know, with our boost algorithms we eke out just about everything you can get, so maybe a couple of hundred MHz. With the 65 watt parts you'll get a lot more because their specs run with a lower power. So you can overclock the thing, get all the power out of it, and obviously you get more headroom out of it. So let's go ahead and break this down. Processors like the Ryzen 7 3800X and the Ryzen 9 3900X and 3950X may only get a few hundred MHz. The lower end of the processors with the 65 watt TDP like the Ryzen 7 3700X and the Ryzen 5 3600 may have more overclocking capabilities due to the lower power consumption and achieving higher clock. Now, video cards did leak a CPU Z shot of the Ryzen 5 3600 overclocked to 4.2 GHz, which is what the boost frequency of the chip is meant to be. It was also running 16 GB of 3200 MHz RAM with a cache latency of 14. So, along with the snapshot from CPU Z, we also get Cinebench scores as well. So, on over at Cinebench R15 first, we can see two Ryzen 5 3600 scores. First one hitting 1443 points, just 8 points below the i7 9700K and the second one of 1,561 points, just 17 points lower than the i7-8700K. So over in Cinebench R20 on the multi-threaded side, and we find another two scores for the Ryzen 5 3600. Up first is the highlighted score, which sits at 3,229 points, whilst up two spots from there is another score at 3,505. So moving on to Navi and the 5700 XT GPUs, and the previous leaks of the 600 series cards were actually going to be correct. As we can see here, the 50th anniversary edition was going to be called the RX 690. So the standard 5700 XT was going to be the 690 and the 5700 was actually going to be the 680. So the 690 is similar to what AMD did with the 580, bringing out the 590. The 590 had a boost clock increase of 15%, where the 5700 XT and Anniversary Edition is only a 4% difference in clock speed. So let's move on to Intel's 10 nanometer process on the Sunny Cove architecture. And if this table is anything to go by, then 10 nanometers is pretty impressive. In single core scores, the i7-1065G7, which is 4 cores and 8 threads, running at 3.7 GHz, achieves 639 points. This beats the 7700K running at 5.2 GHz, but is on the heels of the 9700K running at 5.3 GHz. And just for reference, the i9-9900KS scores just 600 points. So if we move on down the table, and we can see an early 6-core 12-thread Sunny Cove chip. However, it has no code name, but it's running at 3.6 GHz, and achieved 630 points. This is just as good as KB Lake and the 3800X. Do bear in mind that these are only mobile processors, so we'll have to wait for 10 nanometer process on desktop. By these results, could it be worth it, considering AMD is steamrolling forward in their roadmap? Intel also claims to have an IPC gain of 18% but this will only be in certain applications. It also looks like Intel is feeling the heat from third generation Ryzen. On over at TechSpot and reported by DigiTimes, Intel is planning to lower prices by 10 to 15% on the 8th and 9th generation CPUs. They have also noted its downstream PC and motherboard partners. Could we now see Intel starting to become more competitive on CPU prices in the future? So that's it all from me. Do tell me your thoughts on Ryzen third generation CPUs and Intel's 10 nanometer process in the comments section down below. If you did like the video then go ahead and give me a thumbs up, do go ahead and click on that subscribe button, it'd be greatly appreciated and do click on that bell icon for more notifications from myself and like always I shall see you in the next video.